Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 62 of the Eve's Drop Podcast. Damn. Now it's going to look like I'm flexing. Dude, weird one. Why are you always with the weird Wait. flexes? We get it, man. You got a chain. Don't bring that over here. I don't need it. Oh, that's yours. Yeah, that's mine. Look at that. The Halo one? The Call of Duty Champs one. Let me see the Halo one. Halo one's cooler, bar the bar the logo. The logo is I was going to get a tattoo, thank God. No, you can still get it. It still represented something special. Espresso? Espresso, not espresso. Espresso, espresso? Yeah. Your girlfriend walked in saying that you say espresso. I pronounce shit how I want. It's a free country. Yeah, well. Espresso. Anyway, welcome to episode number 62. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on. I'm going to tell you the story about Maxwell, how he landed in the United States. His shit got hacked. But if he would have been using an ExpressVPN, that wouldn't have happened. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Two years, three months ago, or a year and seven months ago, you and I sat down to have a very, very special conversation about absolutely nothing. That was the first like episode number four of the Eavesdrop podcast. I looked very different. You looked swole. I was looking and I'm like, my man's physique but, but there is something to say, and I want scientists. Can they even see this? Yes. I want scientists to get behind this and run Yo, a test. Yo, I weighed myself last night. I hit the big two hundred. Jesus Christ! Give me some. Mm, the power of Christ compels you. Listen to me. Two hundred point four. Two hundred pounds. <laughs> I've been Jesus. snacking. I've been snacking. What's crazy, hard. guys? You guys don't know this, but we were we have the same waistline. Thirty four. Yeah. Well, that's not measured. That's what I think it is because all my 32s don't even come close to fit. And I got to like, you know how girls like jump up and try to get, yeah. you know, their, their jeans on? That's what I look like in the morning. Well, that's good. Not good. I mean, it's I don't know. Good. Well, again, the, the scientists need to get behind this thing and start asking questions of, is it true that Scump sucks when he's swole and is this like this natural like body, bodybuilding beast? I got to try it again, right? I got to run it back one more time before I, before I croak. I'm sure Iz would appreciate that. She says she likes my physique. You know what's crazy? They say that dad bods are now in. Well, then I'm in. The dad bods are now more appealing to women I'm hella than, in. Than, than beast. I like, might have king dad bod right now. No. It's pretty. It's a dad bod. I've had a dad bod since I was 27. Wait, how old are you now? I turned 25 in 10 days. What are you a, getting a me? A quarter. Um, I don't iPad? know. What do you want? IPad? No. Is that what you want, an iPad? You don't have an iPad? I think she's getting me. I think she already got me the iPad. She always smiles when I ask. Okay. Well, I need to know. Huh? I need to know. If she's... Are you getting him... Okay. All right. Well, we one don't of know. Them, one of them chains. You want one of these chains? You want... No. Nah, you want Andy I and I... I don't wear, like... I don't wear jewelry and stuff. It's not my... Not my not my thing. Not your thing? Nah. I don't know. I don't know, dude. I really don't need anything. Like, maybe a, a laptop... I mean, that's like all that I can think that I need because my, I'm still using yours from 2011. What year? Wait, what, 2009, actually. What, what make in, it's, it's a, a 2009 pro. iMac Pro. I mean, uh, Apple. But Mac it's like, pro. it was like on the higher end. Like you got yes. extra packages. But yeah, that thing, like you turn it on, it takes 10 minutes to start up. You hear like the, the fan inside of it, like. What I don't understand is why you d just don't get one. Because I wait for my birthday, so other people get. <laughs> <laughs> I just never. I you never, know me, man. I pinch the penny. And I know, but I don't. It's I don't, a good trait to have. It is absolutely. Don't, people always roast me. They're like, "You're hella cheap." You know, I've donated to a lot of charities. Yeah. I mean, not to like help my self no, image no, or no. anything. Yeah, yeah. But like in terms of buying material things, it's never been my thing because, a like on if I keep on this track, I'm not even gonna fit nice clothes in a year like <laughs> okay, yeah. there's no point i mean like every single bag that i've ever needed has been provided by the sponsor at that time like so i'm not gonna go get a louis v backpack or like you know all, like what all the pros have i mean i don't i just don't need that shit you know i bought like two pairs of nice shoes a year ago and that was like it and now they're both dirty like yeah i just don't buy things we're sponsored by crap protect you can just use that. I mean, yeah, now. You but know what you should do? You they should were, they're already too far gone. No, you should drop them off, and I'll do an experiment on whether or not like it's it, it works. On the Jordans? Yeah, on the on the on the Jordans. Your shoes, okay. Let's let's look them up right now. 
on StockX. They actually went up quite a bit. Yeah, obviously. Yes. Uh, Air Jordan, Chicago. Um, retro high off whites. Guess how much your size? What's, what's your size? 11. 10, 11? Guess how much they are. Do you know? Do you remember how much you bought them for? Twenty six hundred. Like twenty six, twenty five. Thirty eight hundred on the marketplace right now. If I wanted to get one, my my size eleven and a half would be four K. But for four thousand dollars, I'm going on eBay and buying autographed Michael Jordan shoes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> weird. Well, you're into like the memorabilia, and you're a big Bulls what fan. What makes you say that? I mean. Oh, well, you have some, some figurines and stuff on the wall, but, I mean, you have a signed Dallas helmet. Yo, you, what was that tweet yesterday when you were like, you tweeted me uh, when June Calhoun and Zeke were playing? Oh, yeah. They wanted to play Warzone, and they said, who wants to play? And I'm like, play with Scum. They ain't gonna He'll play carry with you. Yeah, they will. And if I play with Zeke, first thing, people are going to be like, yo, tell him you're an Eagles fan. I know it, so I, it's just a trap. It's yeah. a trap. Don't do it. So I was looking. Um, I was looking at one your wardrobe, and I always wonder, because when you first started dating, this she tried to put you in like the the preppy look and all that shit. No, I don't fit any of it now. You don't fit any of it now. Your your ankles were like almost bloody because you were wearing Vans. Nothing wrong with Vans. Yeah, I when I was, I remember where were we flying to? I think it was to Cali for the uh, the Mountain Dew for the Mountain Dew. A Shout out to Pro them. Am. Yeah. And I remember walking through the airport, and my ankles, or the back of my heels, were literally, like, bleeding. And I told you, don't fucking buy those shoes. Don't buy those shoes. Look, I, I, I don't have a problem with Vans. I love Vans. The things that I they're do. They're just, just not for you. They're underappreciated. No, no, I get it. It's just that they're not comfortable. I rather, underappreciated. At, at, at this point, look, those Jordan, those Jordan right there are the most uncomfortable shoes. Jordans, in general, are the most uncomfortable shoes in the fucking world. But they look good on the feets. I only I, I, like, I like my Jordans though. Yeah, so do I. The thing is, is I'd rather not wear a, not even close some, to some Prestos, which are just like Yeezys are well, even more comfortable. Right oh, Grails. That's what I'm wearing right now. Yeah, that's a fire too. They're dirty. Anyway, let's get into it. Seth. There's there's uh, a lot has happened since you and I last sat down to have this conversation. One, you were uh, living in California. We're just talking and complaining. I, was, I literally watched it this morning, and I was t writing down a couple of shits. We talked about PUBG. <clears throat> Right in the transition of our old PUBG team that could possibly be Call of Duty BR because at the time we we're like, well, what are we gonna do? Like, if if Call of Duty announces that there's going to be a BR, and by now they hadn't announced franchising, they had. I think they didn't even announce that there was gonna be going to a five, right? And some of the predictions that you and I had were actually kind of on point, except for the fact that we both said we wish that PUBG would be a little bit more or it would have more success. It didn't, and ended up. Uh, falling to whatever. Off to, off topic question. Well, kind of on topic. My favorite BR of all time was H one Z one. Like back in the day, people ask me it all the time. Yeah. Like people expect me to say like Blackout or now Warzone, but like they're fun and they're you know they they pass the time. But in terms of like sheer BR like experience, H one Z one. Really, dude, that game was so fun when you would double tap someone in the head with the AR fifteen. I think mm -hmm. you would hear their helmet like. <laughs> Like that noise, it was like, oh, dude. We don't have good noises. Oh, dude, those noises. It was like the noises of just killing someone or getting a headshot and breaking their helmet or something. And then, like, you get the headshot, and it's like, it just the, the noises were satisfying in themselves. And it was just a fun game. It was fast paced. You could roll around in the car, hop out, boop, boop, you know. We talked about, at the time, Ninja was blown up. And we talked about how professional Call of Duty players at the time and professionals were sort of getting mad at the fact that influencers were seeing more success in these show match events. And I said... That's how it's always going to be. Yeah, it was. We talked about it. We like, said it, it should be that way. People, influencers and full-time streamers and content, they are always in front of the camera playing something, A, that they usually enjoy. I mean, sometimes not, but A, usually something they, they enjoy. B, they're playing the hottest thing at the time. Like, if you're a pro, you are limited to your professional game. Yeah. And every time that I personally have tried to, like, go out and play, like, Fortnite, for instance, yeah. like, we go to a tournament, do bad, people instantly scapegoat Fortnite for our downfall in that tournament. And I it's think, like, that's not how it works. I think Priest is going through that right now. <clears throat> yeah. People oh, I, I went through it when we just lost this past weekend. They were like, stop playing Warzone. And I was like, dude, I was probably playing more Warzone when we won the last homestand. Yeah. Like, it's like, people think that because we're playing Warzone, we're not practicing, and 
I mean, we we practiced literally every single day. Like we would we were playing search leading up to that tournament. I think we played it three times back to back to back, and we just had an off weekend in search. And people, you know, instantly threw our downfall on Warzone, and it's like. I digress. No, it's it, Priscilla's going through it. A lot of people are going through it, right? Like even Scraps, I think, said that he was gonna that if he has another shitty game like this one, that do team owners get fined? Team owners? Yeah, or is it just players? They get fined for talking shit about a game. I mean, I'm not gonna look it up. Speak, anyway, for, speak from yourself. I did. I, I'm speaking for myself. I'm like Scraps said that if he has another shitty Didn't game, did you get fined? Yeah, I guess the team got fined. Yeah, so you Hector, got fined. Hector didn't get fined. The team you got, got fined. fined. But I didn't say shit. Though. As much as you don't want to see it, we got fined. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did. Sh- we should really stop talking about that. Cause... Why? Well, it's 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 a thing. People have been getting fined from the <clears> beginning <throat> of time. I know, but I'm scared. Understand. I'm scared now. Really? They they yeah. shook you to your core? Yeah, they got me on a leash. That measly ass whatever the fuck they it was. They got me on they... a leash now. No, they don't. Don't say that. I'm on a roof. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I can't I can't believe it. it uh, so for those who don't know, you got fine. And I guess <clears throat> nobody knew what you got yesterday in uh, during the Huntsman show. I mean, people that like no, no. Like people I've uh, people that when I said that I got fined, people were like linking me the clip of why I got fined. Like people know why I got fined. Yeah. But it if was If you do a little bit of research. Uh, we will s- spare you. It is because of the Huntsman show that we did here at the Hex Quarters on the tier on the tiered list. Yeah, and I spoke honestly, and I mean, I'm not allowed to do that. You're not. Allowed, do you feel like you're not allowed to speak honestly about about the game? Obviously, I got fined for it. Was there any malicious intent behind what you were saying? No. Was it constructive criticism? No. It was just you having an opinion about something. Yes, yeah, so it was me speaking my mind about the current state and current. I mean, I'm going to get my ass fined again. I'll, I'll cover it. Don't worry. Well, I was just speaking my mind on the current state of the game, A, and the current state of development support mm-hmm. or developer support that we are not getting. You know? I mean, you can go pros. Pros tweet about it all the time. Yeah. Like, Do they get fined? I wonder. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I see people tweet stuff all the time, and I'm like, he's getting fined, right? Like, there's no way. And then well, I, I mean, don't, don't think they Well, I mean, don't be a fucking snitch and go fucking. I'm not going like, <laughs> to do that. I'm yeah, not going to yeah, say yeah, names. I know, I know. But I see people all the time, and I'm like, that's, like, finable. For what I said, that's that's a finable offense. It's a fine-ass offense. But, I mean, I spoke my mind. I don't regret it. I mean... The thing is this. It's and, something and that I play I, every always, day, and I'm forced since, to play every single day. Since the days of Machinima, I'm talking about early 2010. There is one saying that has always reigned supreme, and I'm upset at the fact... And I and I was there. I was on the same call that you were. We were we were very upset about the, the fine, because as long as it's... A, as long as it's in the creative essence, according to the scene of whatever it is that we're shooting, it should be off limits. Okay? It should be off limits. It's creativity. It's uh, people people that joke don't get fined or don't get certain things from, from a comedic standpoint because well, we you, should, you, should, you should have levity in situations like this. And we weren't even doing that. We were just being entertaining. How many other teams out there are out there creating shows Nobody. To, to, to make it happen? There are some. Right, I wish there was more. Well, there are some that will go on like spurts of doing it, and yeah. then they'll like just go blank and right. stop. We we consistently do that thing. You yeah, know? and we consistently. And sometimes do- it's gonna, you know, sometimes it's gonna lead back to an opinion about Call of Duty, which is what we play every day. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not getting my. Um, you're not gonna get fined. I'm st- I'm I'm stopped. But you're not saying anything though. I don't want you to walk around on eggshells thinking that you're going to get fined. One, you can afford it. Shut the fuck up. Two, but I don't. I'm a penny pincher, bro. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And now you, that they know that, now they're going to come for me. <laughs> they're going to be like <laughs> five hundred. You're going to be like, uh, <laughs> uh, everyone hurts. Um, you shouldn't. You shouldn't tiptoe around. Now, I understand if you were out there just bashing the game to bash the game, but we were just having fun making a a a a show about something. Right now, I've 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 been very very positive about everything that the league's been doing. Uh, I think that everybody in the league, for what it's worth, has been really really easy going. Now I can tell you about other uh, franchise leagues in which it's not going as smoothly as Call of Duty has. My experience with Call of Duty franchising and the way that there's some things that we need to tweak, sure, 
But my experience so far with the people behind it, like Johanna, uh, Pete, I mean, you name like it's been good, right? Like it's been good. Like they've uh, they listen, right? But they can't get through to the developer. I don't know what it is, man. And I, and, and 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 to be honest, to sit here and I and mean, I know it, what it is, but I'm not saying that shit. Well, you want to type it to me? You want to send me a text so I say it? Nah, it's cool. Uh, either way, I, it sounded I just, intriguing. Yeah, I just what what I want is to have the freedom to be able to be funny, to be able to have. Uh, we do like at no point am I ever just well. I say that with a obviously with a asterisk there, but at no point am I not ever gonna say what I think. You know what I mean? And I think that you guys should have the same sort of freedoms as long as it's in a creative space, as long as is in a in in a situation where you are entertaining the fan base right you're doing and going above and beyond creating content surrounding call of duty surrounding a franchise team that feeds into a an overall league that will then benefit from eyeballs like that should be a thing right well, you should be allowed to to do that because if that's the point then we're just going to stop making videos i mean content has always been you know the carrier of the cod league it's like content people want to see people talking shit to each other people want to see drama people want to see like storylines yeah and that's content like people don't understand that is literal content even though sometimes it's not i don't know done on purpose for mm -hmm, content mm -hmm. it's still content yeah like at the end of the day so i don't know i mean i guess it just limits content i mean it's only gonna happen in a video like that though where we're giving our opinions mm -hmm. on cod like we're not just gonna openly go out and say that you One know. time, <clears throat> the, the, uh, uh, when was it? We were at the Scuff House. You, Ian, F Karma, we did a State of Call of Duty uh, podcast around Call of Duty. And we were talking shit about, well, you guys were talking shit about Call of Duty, everything that you didn't like, the developer support, the lacking developer support. And I got a call. Uh, I won't say the name, but but I, he, good friend. And I got a call. He's like, you, you shouldn't have done that. And I was like, done what? He's like, well, you were talking shit about this game. You put it. 900,000 people have watched that video. Um, you had Xboxes on the tables. Like, you know that our partner is PlayStation. Like, did you do that intentionally to, to say F you to the sponsors? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? The microphones are too well, heavy for the tables. <laughs> Xboxes are only good for fucking... First off, I time. got it. Players' personal channels should not be owned by the league. They're not. They are. No, they're We're not. We're not allowed to promote things that we want. What do you mean? Like my YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. Yes, can't. you can. You can play any game that you want on your channel, Seth. Not game. Sponsors, whatever. Okay, go on. You know what I'm saying. But I don't know how deep I can go into it because I'm not trying to piss anybody off you're talking about personal sponsorships personal sponsorships it's not so much sponsors but i'm saying like games sponsors yeah whatever endorsements uh ad deals brand deals whatever mm -hmm. that stuff should be for the player i mean i built my channel you know yeah. and if i have to turn down something because the league says that i can't do that that's whack you know that's money out of my pocket because of the league isn't there like you can't promote this because we have a sponsor but anything they're Anything league sanctioned, like an event, a video, like their sponsors, whatever. Mm -hmm. But anything on my personal channels are my personal channels. And obviously, our team sponsors are a different story. Yeah. But anything, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Anything league sanctioned, we should be repping their stuff. But anything that's ours yeah. is ours. And I've built that. The league didn't help me build that mm -hmm. at all. I built that. You played Call of Duty during it. Yeah. But you also played Minecraft doing it. Well... You also played all the games doing it, right? Well, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily just Call of Duty that set us Call apart. Call of Duty obviously helped a lot because that's been my yeah. main game and what yeah. I've like built my my brand and all that. Off but of. you've had the same success playing other shit. Like I've seen you get the same amount of views playing playing something else. Like it's not it's not a matter of like damn if you damn if you don't. This is a conversation that pissed me off when I and it was is JD twenty twenty. Okay, that's uh, don't even look him up. Not worth it. But way back when. Way back when in Black Ops 1, when I complained about the sniping there, when Von Erhard first stepped into the scene in, in a meaningful way, JD, this dude was fucking the community guy or some shit. Right? I remember JD. Anyway, he said something about snipers. And then even now, even, to, even fucking like a month ago, two, a year ago, I don't even fucking remember. It doesn't matter. Insignificant. He said that the only reason that 
at the time our team was where it was, was because of Call of Duty. Had that dude not say that, I wouldn't have started playing Minecraft. We wouldn't have blown up and transcended Call of Duty the way that we did. That wouldn't have given me the, the, the path that said, we don't need one specific game to be one specific thing. Our growth depends on expansion. Our growth depends on us as personalities. It doesn't matter the platform that we're on. Had he never said that, I think that we would have just stuck to what we know because why fix what's not broken. But the second that he said, you're only where you're at because of this game, I said, okay, time to prove that you're wrong. Minecraft. Minecraft. Nate shot blew up on Minecraft. Big timer blew up on Minecraft. I mean, look at everyone that's left Call of Duty and done other things. Like, yeah. imagine if I left Call of Duty and played Fortnite when it was blowing up. Yeah. Like, well, that brings me... You know, yeah. like, look at Nick Merckx. Yeah. I mean, dude, he went to Fortnite. He was a COD S&D streamer. I mean, yeah. just to... And before just, that, a Gears of War player. Just to use him as an example, because he's, like, one of the biggest examples. He was a Gears of War pro. Yeah. Retired from Gears, started playing COD S&D tournaments, streaming those regularly... Figured, okay, I'm done with COD now. Now's my next move. Fortnite. Went to Fortnite. Blew up. Now he came back to Warzone streaming again, and he's averaging 40K. Yeah. You know, that doesn't just happen if you're just only playing COD. Yeah, right. You know, he went to other other networks, other games, yeah. and developed a new fan base on top of his already existing yeah. fan base. And now look at him, you know? Yeah. It's it, like... Yeah. So, again, it's, it's not that. So, the... People blocking you from, or no, they're not blocking. I don't think. I don't think that you got, on the sponsorship. I get it, and I think that at some point it will change because it can't be sustainable to do that. Um, Peyton Manning, I think, uh, promotes Pontiac or some shit on his. And on, the NFL is what Honda Ford or, or Ford yeah. or something. Ford. What I'm saying is that at some point or another, that that can't be a thing. Um, and for for me, it's always. I mean, anybody that's in esports and doesn't understand that. You know, for for this building face of esports is a player friendly, um, more player more friendly to the player than it is to the organizations. Like doesn't know the space that they're in, right? And if you are in it for the long run, you have to be mindful of that, if that makes sense. Because it is, I don't want to go down that route. But I was talking about this. We got to get off this subject, yeah. bro. This is just red flags all over. No, the no, place. no. It's not. No, it's not. I, I, I'm. I, I would have noticed. Check this out, oh, okay? Please, please. Please spare me. I know they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to be good. <laughs> He's asking me the Please. questions. Um, I have it written down here, okay? Because we were talking about this when we when we did the podcast last time. You were close to retiring. You were <clears> close <throat> to just saying, "Forget this." You were close to saying, "I'm gonna make more money as a streamer slash content creator." than I am as a professional game. Does that still cross your mind, especially now where you have sort of these these like shackles that say you can do this, but you can't make money here. Even though there's a lot of money here for you to make, you get th you get paid for it to do this. That does it does it cross your mind ever I mean, or, or at all? It definitely like influences my decision. Like I mean I'll be straight up. My I'm contracted until the end of the next call of duty and then it's my call. Mm -hmm. Like I have this year and the next year contracted. And then after that, I mean, you know, I, I'm going to have to make that call and I don't want to retire. I still love it. I mean, practicing, it can be a bit of a bore, but I mean, you can ask any veteran. I mean, practicing, we've been doing this for a decade now. It's like mm -hmm. every single day it gets a little bit redundant. Um, but I still love competing Yeah, and I still love the team aspect. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love the feeling of winning hate the feeling of losing. So it's not like I've lost my love for it. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's obvious. Yeah, I still love it. I, I think mean, it's always been obvious, though, because somebody who has accomplished as much as you have, both from a career standpoint, but also from a financial standpoint, and you still put up the, the time to do the hours, and then on top of that, obviously, you, you, you go on and do the extra work. Like, that shows that, I mean, uh, to me, it shows that you're not done, right? I know because I see your fucking day. I've known you for, since you were 17. Like, this... I know who you are as a person, and that might get lost because we're just two people talking in front of uh, a, a camera. To them, it's just two dudes that I can't touch, right? I mean, obviously, they know us because of, of how long, but the, the competition's still there for you. How much time do you think you have? I, I said you're, what, 25 now? I think, I think you still got like a good five, seven years. I mean, realistically, I think, I don't know, my max would probably be like, Four years. 
mm-hmm. my max like left because I'm a sub player. You know, I'm not I'm not an AR where I can just go L trig or something. I mean, I could transition <laughs> to that, but yeah. it would be, you know, it'd be a long a long transitional phase. Yeah. I, I, it wouldn't be a long transi- transitional phase, but I've been so used to just headbutting, you know, being fast around the map for for my whole career. So, yeah, I would say. I would say like four years, maybe. Um, I mean, it's hard to tell. You can't put a pin in it and no, be like, this will be my final year. Yeah. I mean, it really just depends on the state of Call of Duty. Um, I mean, we have Treyarch next year, so I know that they're going to kill it. They always do. They always work really well with the players. They they fix things that we need very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, they tune things. I mean, Treyarch's always been great to us, and that's why you know you see pros now. They're like counting down the days until Treyarch because mm-hmm. Treyarch's always been there for us. Um so yeah, really, I would say it just depends on the state of Call of Duty, uh, the state of gaming in general. You know, if if a game comes out that really catches my eye and I can't help but to go play that instead of COD, then that's another thing that would that would pull me away. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of variables, so again, it's you can't put a pin in it. But I would say like four years, maybe maybe longer, depending on how I'm doing at that, at that time. Uh, but I've always said as long as I'm still playing at a level where I know that I'm not costing my team. Um, I would like to continue playing. And I think that the last two years I've been playing at a level that I'm still benefiting the team like yeah. a lot. You know, I'm not yeah. I'm not dropping one point threes like I used to every event, but I'm still like I had like a one point one two last event or something. Like I played bad search, but you know, I'm still I still got it. I still got a little bit in the tank, you mm-hmm. know. So yeah, we'll see. And I, I've always been a player that's played better the more I enjoyed a game. So hopefully next year it comes out with some amazing pubs, and I can pub stomp, post those to YouTube, you know, like I used to, and that's that's when I've always thrived, when I have something other than just competing that I really, really love. This year I have Warzone, but it's not the same as the real game, you yeah. know, like people have armor, and yeah. I'm using different guns, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it all depends. Yeah, I think, I think um, personally, I, I, I don't see this thing, I've obviously seen... Um, what was it? What's that Counter Strike team? The the Polish team, uh, Virtus Pro. Virtus Pro, right? Those dudes were like up there, right? Like uh, Taz. Those dudes were like older, and they were still like winning fucking championships, right? So this whole different game, yeah, different game, still, but right? Slower, S and D, sure, set. sure, of course, but still, like I don't think that your reaction time diminishes or goes away that much to where you were no, you're no longer a pro player. You know what I mean? Like if you, if I think it's more of just the decision making. Yeah. Like the the split second, like I know what I'm doing in every situation faster than you. I think that's what determines like a pro. Like everyone at that level can shoot yeah. and shoot well. Some up some better than others, obviously. There still is gun skill, but I mean that that is what like defines a pro from like an amateur player is that split second, you know, I'm just a little bit faster than you. The first video that you uploaded was in 2000 and I believe nine. I think it was in 2009. I, I, MW3, I want to say. MW3, I'm pretty yeah. sure I've started my YouTube in so MW3. So like 2000, t- towards 2010. Let's just call it 2010. Right? It's, it's almost going to be a decade of you being on top of a very specific eSport. But not just that. Like your following has transcended Call of Duty if you look at your reach, Right. I don't think that there's a lot of people out there that have been able to stay at that t- that relevant for that long. If you look at the amount of people that started in the gaming community and the original gaming community from the from the machinima days, a lot of those people are no longer here. Or if they are, they're they're there, but they're just getting by, right? Like you 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 still get incredible views on YouTube. You still get a good following on Twitch. Uh, you still perform the way that you perform uh, from a Call of Duty standpoint. Like, if you look at every single other content creator that's out there, they don't have the additional baggage and stress that is to be a professional player. So I, I'm, I'm giving you props for that because there's not a lot of people out there still competing and creating the... Uh, is there? Is there somebody that competes and, and creates content the way that you do on a daily basis? I don't... I mean, I've taken breaks. Like, the past couple of years, I've taken breaks, but I don't... I don't think so. And that's that's one thing that has always kind of bothered me mm-hmm. is that people look at me as a content creator. You know, like people will come into my Twitch. They're like, why don't you upload to YouTube as much as you used to? And it's like, bro, at the end of the day, like my main job right now is to compete. It's not to make content. My job right now is a professional player. I mean, if I had the time every single day to just wake up, 
I mean, I would A, fix my schedule. I would wake up earlier in the morning, start my stream at like 9 a.m. and go till like 6 or like 5 p.m. Um, but now I'm kind of like limited because if I want to wake up and play Warzone early, I can only play for two to three hours before scrim start at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like I don't have all day every day to just do what I want. And that's where I feel like if I had that, I would benefit so much more. I mean, even my friends like roast me about it, like Nate and Courage. They're like, imagine what you could be doing, you know, like, and I'm like, I know, <laughs> you know, it's not like I don't know that. Um, but it's like, again, I'm, I still love competing. It's my main job right now. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's really all boils down to, but I know like what I could do if I, if I really wanted to. And people look at me as a content creator, which is always kind of bothered me because they expect me to always be on it yeah and they don't realize that additional baggage and stress that i have all the time like who wants to go fucking stream after they just got six through eighth you know like yeah. nobody yeah but you know i still find the power to do it and the the energy to do it um it's not fun to get on stream after the nrg <sighs> you're 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 sort of it's, it's burned into your brain not to say it that way i look at that but um yeah i mean it's it definitely sucks like who wants to get on stream and just get reminded that they just got smoked like nobody but right. we're professionals and at the end of the day like that's comes with the territory like you're not always gonna win yeah and another thing that bothers me let's just get a lot off my chest right yeah, now please is how people look at the cod league and think that the top three teams are just like gods and nobody can fuck with them mm -hmm. like so like this past weekend we lost to florida and the Los Angeles Gorillas, mm -hmm. both really strong search teams. Florida actually played really good respawn, mm -hmm. but like people just look at the Gorillas and they're like free win, and it's like it's not like that. No, you know there are twelve teams, sixty players of the best talent like in COD. Yeah, you know how hard it is to consistently be on top of that like all the time. Yeah, and we had a bad showing in search, and yeah. people are like, you guys need to practice more. I think we're the best respawn team in the game. We beat Florida in both hard points where FaZe and Dallas lost both hard points to Florida. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we are a good-ass team, but we just faltered in one game mode, and people are like, stop playing Warzone. You guys need to practice this more. It's like, we practice it, yeah. but other teams are practicing it too, and they're refining it as well. And a lot of these things come down to, like, one gunfight, one bad call-out, one thing that can turn a whole map on its head, and you lose. But people just don't see that, and... You know, it's it's kind of a, it's annoying and frustrating because they put so much more stress and baggage on us because they just assume that we're going to win everything. And it's like, it's not like that anymore. Like back then, yeah. maybe, but Call of Duty's evolved to a point where there's a lot more competition. Not only is there a lot more competition, we've shrunk everything. We, we went from a pool of, call it, 120 players to 60. So we, the, the top 120 players that can beat anybody on any given Sunday. Can be on any team, like. Yeah, it just it made teams easier to make more talented. Yeah, because there's just more super teams. Yeah, we developed twelve super teams essentially. Uh, yeah, and that's how it should be. You know, yeah. twelve teams that can beat anyone on any given Sunday, and I don't know. People just get upset with us, and obviously we're upset with ourselves. Like we yeah. don't want to lose. No. You know, we practice every single day. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's always been frustrating to me, and. Yeah, I don't know, that's well, it. Well, from a streaming standpoint, actually, let, let me go to the sponsors really quickly, and then I'll ask you about the streaming stuff. We all know how e uh, ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, right? Yeah. Okay, well, here's something that you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. For example, Apocalypto. For the longest time, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it on iTunes, couldn't find it anywhere. I tried to buy a, a DVD, but then I would have had to buy a DVD player, Blu-ray, the whole nine... If I'd have known that ExpressVPN also works for this, then I would have already seen Apocalypto. Everything that I found was either played backwards or the voices were, it doesn't matter. Nonetheless, so now that many of us are stuck at home, it's only a matter of time until you run out of stuff to watch on Netflix, okay? So what you can do, right, is use ExpressVPN to watch things from other countries because what ExpressVPN does is it hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. Uh, you can choose from almost 100 different countries, so just think about all the Netflix libraries you can go through. Love anime? Use ExpressVPN to access Japanese Netflix and be spirited away. Excellent show, by the way. 
excellent movie that is such a good uh, uh, obviously as an artist i appreciate the, the the cartoon look but when they when the big giant baby came out in his diapers that was like one of the coolest characters i've ever seen uh drawn in the history of art in my opinion or everything that i've seen so but it's not just Netflix, okay? ExpressVPN works with any streaming service, whether it's Hulu, BBC Play, BBC iPlayer, uh, YouTube, you name it. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason I use ExpressVPN uh, to watch shows is that it's ridiculously fast and it's something that we've used in the past. Uh, obviously, if Mixwell was using this, as I said at the beginning of this podcast, using an ExpressVPN on his phone when he landed on the airport and used the public uh, Wi-Fi, his account would have never been hacked and he would have been off on his merry way. Right, ExpressVPN is also compatible with all your devices, phones, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. So you can watch you, you can watch what you want on a personal device or on the big screen wherever you are. If you visit my special link right now at expressvpn.com forward slash hex h three c z, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Show the uh, support the show. Watch what you want and protect yourself with ExpressVPN. That's e x p r e s s v p n dot com slash h three c z. Again, that is again for the people in the back. That is visit http colon forward slash forward slash expressvpn dot com forward slash h three c z and get an extra three months for free. So huge shout out to ExpressVPN on that. So on the streaming stuff, and I have it written down here. Uh, during World War Two, you didn't stream at all. Obviously, you got shitty internet, right? But at the same time... I couldn't even practice in World War yeah, II. Yeah, you couldn't even practice in World War II, but th that's your fault. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Well, I tried, you know, I had technicians out every other, like, couple days to try and fix it, and yeah. they just, they couldn't do it. And I had, yeah. them, I had them out probably 20 plus times trying to fix it, and they just couldn't fix it, so... I think that one of the main reasons people in, in, in your profession, in, at your level, don't stream is because of what you just said. They don't want to get on stream to hear people talk shit about them and people talk. Like, people, pe the fans are going to be rowdy at all, at, at every single uh, category of competition, whether it's sports, whether it's chess, whether it's whatever it is. People are always, there's going to be a boisterous few that are going to talk shit. That's their job. That's how they get their, 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 Ruffles fe their feathers ruffled or whatever. Rocks off. Yeah, they're rocks off. There you go. So I think that that's one of the main reasons that they don't do that. And I think that every single time that a streamer or that a a, a professional player doesn't stream, they're doing themselves like a, a disservice in an opportunity. You know what I mean? Like if you yeah, if you look at at um, I don't. I'm actually not gonna name any names. Okay, but there are a lot of professional players who could have something right now. By now, they could have had something to fall back on. If they got benched or if they got dropped, like the the, the uncertainty of the the certainty the certain the certainty of this league is that it's going to be here forever. The uncertainty about that is whether or not you are going to be here forever, mm -hmm. right? The me, you, I mean everybody, no but no one, no one can be spared, right? Period. But if you're a player and you are not doing the extra work, bad on you. Because there's going to come the time where you're not going to be performing or you're going to say the wrong thing to the wrong teammate and the wrong teammate's more popular with the rest of the teammates. So you're the one, first one on the chopping block. You're out. You're on the bench. You, you're only going to collect that free check for a little bit. What happens if you don't get picked up next year? What happens if next year somebody chooses not to renew I mean, your that's, contract? That's the thing with me being a penny pincher. I also see things in longevity. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I don't look a week or two out. I look like years out. Like Yeah. After this contract's up, what will I be able to do? Or mm -hmm. where can I go, you know? Like, I look at things years out. Like, I'll sign a contract and then instantly be, like, looking past it. I'm going to do my work, obviously. But I always, like, set things up for myself yeah. so that I know that I'll always be good and I'll always be taken care of. And, yeah. I mean, you've helped me a lot with that. Um, and just the learning process and what, you know, how you need to think in a in a realm like this because... Yeah, I mean, you're not always going to be able to perform. You know, you're going to outgrow the or outage just yeah. the the platform that you have. And being a competitor, that can happen in a year. You yeah. could be really, really good at one COD, and then the next COD you could just not be, like, nearly as good. And yeah. if you don't have that safety net behind you, then you'll just fall on your back and be like, well, you know, now what do I do? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, people... I don't know. I just always have looked at thing in longevity. And look, look at I'm, I'm gonna give you a show. Look at Tyler. Look at TP. Okay, killed it. Think think about think about his 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 uh, his storyline, right? 
and he player. he grinded like he is still grinding to this day. Yeah. You know that guy he has the same mentality that you do, same oh. mentality that I do, same mentality that Nate shot, that courage, that people who have said this isn't forever, but I'm gonna make. I'm gonna it get happen. mine yeah. now. Yeah, he is. The, the, I mean, ever since Blackout, dude, like that guy, he deserves everything. He has been grinding yeah. Twitch like unlike anything. I mean, this guy, he'll go on a thousand sub train and he just won't get off until no. like that dies. And you know how people want to save it; they'll keep saving it over and mm -hmm. over and over. Mm -hmm. So he's had so many like sixteen, seventeen hour streams. That's like that is so hard to do. And I give him all the respect in the world because Same. me personally, I mean, right now. I couldn't do that. Like as a competitor, I cannot do that. Yeah. Um, even after competing, I want to do that, but I don't even know if I can do that. There's a lot of time yeah. on stream, you yeah. know? And well, it, 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 it comes up for him. It comes down to, to two things, right? The, the ability to want to be successful and the good support system that he has in Deej, right? Because it's not easy. It wasn't easy for Jew to just sit there while I was gone. It wasn't easy for Jew to just be the, the person at the house taking care of the dogs and the daughter and, and the house, you know, while I was out there having fun. Like, it can't be easy. Just from a, Even if I was out there working on, on, a, on some oil rig somewhere, like busting my ass off, it still wouldn't have been easy for her to do. But for me to have fun, that's even worse. It's like I'm not even fucking working. I'm just using my brain and my words at that point. You know, where people are, are, are literally sweating and losing limbs and doing this shit the, the other. Imagine how hard that is, right? So for TP, if, if you look at his storyline and the way that that went down, and he was going to coach the Huntsman, we had a contract in front of him, but we talked, and I told him, I'm like, you are in a position, TP, where you don't want to do this. You're in a position the way that Jack was in a position. You have an opportunity the way that Jack had an don't opportunity. Don't stomp your fire out. Don't don't, don't take away any no, hours from no, what you're doing right no. now because it's, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I would have given. I could have paid him whatever he wanted. But I I'm, I told him, like, dude, between you and me, don't do that. Fucking go do your thing. And he's like, you think? Yes. Look at him now. You think? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna Hell say yeah. the deep voice. The, yeah, dude, I'm so happy. I, I, I told to this day we keep on talking in a chat. Like we haven't celebrated his success yet. We have to go out. We have to take him out, and we have to celebrate because that doesn't happen to everybody. No matter, there are people out there who have been grinding for years and still haven't seen it. Is it down the road? Hopefully. Are you getting paid to do what you do now? Yes. So you have that coming in. At the end of the day, the reward is the creation of whatever content it is that you're, that you're putting out, right? The money and all that, the glamour, that's all bonus, right? And that's always my mentality when I approach this whole thing because I know what it's like to work a nine to five where I have to type three, four, four, three to go take a piss. I know what that feels like. I have dreams where I'm sitting in a cubicle with files tall as hell and me saying, it's like, holy shit, I haven't done my work in like months. Why haven't I been fired? I literally have this fear in me. I wake up and I'm like, never again will I ever like, I, I feel like my, my I lose my, the blood rushes away from like, I don't know how, how to say that, but I, I lose like all senses. I'm just like in fear that I have to maybe go back to something like that. Not that I would or could. It's not, it's not in my future to do that, but I still fear what it was like to not do what I do now for a living. And that to me is like crazy. So when, TP came around, and I saw his his climb to to where it was, where I see him today. Oh, it's insane, bro. I, I mean, he's like, I mean, I, he's probably what twenty seven, twenty eight thousand yeah. subs. Like yeah. my highest was like twenty six thousand, and that's when I was averaging like, or I had a hundred thousand viewers at one point. We yeah. were doing giveaways every single day, yeah. like, and he's doing that just yeah by himself, just. Every single day, putting the work in, and his community is crazy. So you, you, you gotta you gotta tip your hat to it's a hard work because he outworked everybody. Everybody. And now he's reaping the you benefits. You know what? He, you know what he said to himself. He said to himself. He sat there, and he said, "What well, we have said in the past at some point or another, someone someone's gonna be rich off of this thing. Might as well be Might me. Might as well be you. Might as well be me. What does it take? This? Okay. Deej, are you cool with this? Yes. All right. Let's do this. And he got. He he put his head down. He started working. He was streaming from 9 to the time that he had to coach you pricks and then fucking deal with that shit and then get off and then stream again maybe. And then over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like Every day. It, it's insane. It's insane. I'm, I'm so happy for him. So anybody that's out there, right, every single pro out there that isn't taking the time to do that, no matter how small you are. I saw I saw that dude uh, Teddy Rex streaming the other day. That, I see I see something there. Like I, I, I've seen him stream for the longest time, right? 
Will he ever break through? I, I think so. I think that there's going to be an opportunity everyone for Everyone like, always, like, if you put the time in, everyone usually, I don't want to say always because that's a big word, but everyone usually gets, like, their break. And whether they grow, like, 400 times or 100 times, like, you're going to hit, like, that spurt. And you're yeah. going to, you know, see it come back to you yeah. uh, for all the that work that you put in. Because you're always going to have your core community. Once you get some fresh eyes on you, then it's like, you know, you never know. You never know. People forget that the dream, the American dream, the true American dream, is to make a living off of something that you love doing. The, the, your, if your goal when you're creating gaming content, no matter what it is, if paying bills isn't enough for you, then you're thinking about it wrong. Hope for the best. Hope to, to, to grow beyond just paying your bills. But paying your bills is, is, is just a blessing Period. If you're able to play your pay your bills off of playing fucking video games, you have made it. Unlike anybody else, unlike any of your parents, unlike anybody else. Okay, because I I I I'd rather make sixty thousand dollars a year doing something that I love and ha gives me no stress and instead gives me happiness than making a hundred and twenty to two. Well, maybe not. Maybe not me, because I I chase it. But there is something to be said about being happy and making sixty than being miserable and making a buck twenty. You know what I mean? Like, but it's not always rainbows and sunshine either. Tell me about it. It's not. So, tell me about it. I mean, that's the other thing that people don't realize is the stress that comes with. You said it's stress free. It's stressful as hell. Yeah. I mean. Well, yeah. There's always people gunning for your spot. There's always people trying to, you know, roast you, and uh, you know, you can have the thickest skin ever. Eventually, someone's gonna get through. Yeah. You know, so it's not all sunshine and rainbows and uh, you know it, it leprechauns can, and pegasus and i mean me personally i kind of live and die with call of duty like it's I been disagree. it's been stre well right now yeah, yeah, yeah right now i mean you know if if cod gets released next year and it's just a complete dud like all my viewership numbers that i'm used to and all of that it could just you know i, I don't think so well i, I think mean, they're there for you i'm gonna tell you why it, it our videos wouldn't do as good. The videos that we upload here. Like, did you know the Huntsmen are about to pass every single seat? Well, not just seat. Any Activision franchise out there? Like, in a following, from, from a following standpoint, from a social media currency standpoint, we're about to pass up every single OWL team out there. And we are eight months old. At eight months old, we have already, like, achieved wah. so much. A little baby yeah. stage. Right? I said, wow. Wow. What I'm saying is that, like, we've already been named in the top 10 most mentioned. That's when we had events, right? Uh, uh, against the likes of, of Cloud9, against the likes of, uh, of, of Team Liquid, TSM, 100 Thieves. And we're just one team. It's just Call of Duty. They have League of Legends. They have uh, uh, Counter-Strike. The, these are all opportunities from different scenes to, to type and talk about one specific thing. Like, we've done that already. And it's not because of Call of Duty. It's because of what you have built, because of what we built. When we sit down to make that, made that video on having an opinion, having an opinion about something, it's not playing Call of Duty. We got 300,000 views on that video just by talking and sitting on a thing, moving something around. We weren't playing Call of Duty. So again, you know, you say that, but it's untrue. You don't well, need Call of Duty to do that. Uh, but if I'm a contracted Call of Duty player, yeah. I mean, I'm not just going to go grind another game all day long. No. You know, I'm. Yeah. that's my profession right now. I'm... Mm -hmm. I have to perform, I have to do well, we have to win chips. You know, it's that simple. Yeah. So when I say live and die with Call of Duty, that's the only thing that I can do right now. So in this, Got it. you know, this this time frame, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think that in, in a situation like that where you saw a an impact happening to your viewership, I think nobody would blame you if you start playing something else, whatever's popular at the time. You know what I mean? Uh, I disagree. Well, I'm right, always. So I will get blamed. I will get scapegoated. Yeah. It's already been happening, even with Warzone, which is Call of Duty. Yeah. So imagine if I go play something that's not Call of Duty. Oh. Yeah, but I think it's only like, I don't know, 50 people that talk shit like that. There's only literally, if you, if you count the people on a daily basis that talk shit to you about certain things, it's only like 50. Uh, yeah, fair, but... Uh, it, it's, it? it's 50, Seth. It's 50 people. 50 little pricks who have never done shit, won't do shit, won't be shit. Ooh. Fucking... Trying to tell you what to do as if you're going to listen. And the fact that you're like even bringing it up says that, that, that you are letting them, you know, sort of get in your well, head. Well, yeah. I guess. 
I wouldn't say they're in my head, but I just know. Rent free, babe. I just know what I can and can't do. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, I'm 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 very very hopeful for what we're doing. Uh, not only in 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 Huntsman, but in in the CDL as well. I think that we have all the all the right tools in order to make this thing big as fuck. And the only thing that will get in the way is lack of communication between devs uh, and us. Right. That's the only one thing. And it'll get better. Like it's as much as it sucks right now. It's only temporary. And it may seem like it sucks because we've been doing this for ten years and we really never have any 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 support, right? Like we built this thing, right? This com got competitive shit got built by a certain amount of people. Some devs helped, but they didn't help as much as they should have, right? Like th this has been going on. Like Modern Warfare Three could have been an incredible competitive. My year. favorite Call of Duty. It could have been an incredible uh, pub, pub game wise. Yeah, it could have been an incredible competition year, but they stepped away from. It. They didn't want to support it. I still like that game competitively. Uh, me too. What I'm saying though is that like they understand and they know. They know that the, 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 that we had. I think a better example. Would I be think like World War Two. Yeah, I think little fucking assholes like the guy that I mentioned earlier is the only one that fucking thinks without this fucking game, you guys wouldn't have been shit. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. What the fuck are you doing now? Yeah, man. Fuck. Jesus Christ, what time is it, man? How, how long have we been talking for? Because I'm getting hot up in this shit. You're wearing a sweatshirt, so. Oh, well, Ninja just sent it to me, so I, I had to, we were doing a photo shoot and shit. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. Do you, do you think that there are opportunities for up-and-comers, right? Like, he, he, not even up-and-comers, just people that have been in, around in the scene. Like, I see Octane. Octane, perfect example. Incredible content. Shout out to him. His thumbnails are on point, content's on point. Like, I see him working. You know what I mean? He has the mindset that says, all right, I got to fucking do this shit because I don't know where the fuck this shit's going to fucking lead. Well, they haven't had the best year. Yeah, but still, I mean, it's... It, but I respect it. Yeah, I mean, it's not the, it's not that. I mean, look, we, we lost Damon Karma. You know what I mean? Like, he's the perfect... We lost Karma, J-Cap, Enable. I mean, like, all these really talented guys and... I mean, a lot of people blame the game. I yeah. mean, they're like, they'll probably be back next year, you mm -hmm. know? But it's like, we've lost a lot of a lot of vets to this game. And it's like, I don't know. It's yeah. uh, I think for Karma specifically, I think that he is in the perfect position to have the same sort of opportunity that, that TP has. He's so good at every game that, and funny enough to be able to entertain people to do that. If he gets a haircut and turns his fucking webcam on, he'll be fine. <laughs> He's got to turn the webcam on. Yeah. I was watching him yesterday play Escape from Tarkov and yeah. just no cam. No. He's just grinding. Yeah. You know. That's not streaming, Carl. Why? <laughs> so I, I, think, I think that a lot of it has to do with the game, but most of it and forever, it'll be up to the individual to take responsibility for what his or her future is and will be. You can't you can't sit around and hope that Call of Duty is gonna do you the favor of putting out something that you like and that you're gonna enjoy it to stream. It's not up to them to make you work hard for yourself. It's gotta be on you and only on you're your only but in this space, you're your only boss. You may have people that you have to work with and you have you know to listen to, but you're your own boss. In no other fucking space, well, I mean, I guess it applies to everything in everywhere. The opportunities are there for you to go out and explore. The opportunities are there for you to go out and make a living off of something else. You know, whether it's your nine to five and after work you're, you're streaming, whether it's your nine to five and after work you're creating thumbnails, whether it's your nine to five and on the weekends you're going out to take pictures of people playing, like the opportunities there. It's just a matter of literally saying it's on me and only me and only hold yourself responsible for that. I cannot tell you for the last three months, I've been telling myself how much I suck. I literally sit here and scream, I fucking suck now. Right, because I'm not I'm not producing content. I'm not I'm not streaming. I'm not I'm not vlogging. Uh, I literally wasn't doing shit. I was just working, 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 working. I was just focused on the on the business side of shit. From a creative standpoint, you know what did that to me? I'm a fucking artist. God damn it! I'm an artist first, and then everything else comes second. It sucked, man. I suck. Look at that. I have been uploading videos to YouTube for ten years. Where do you, where do you see that? Uh, I'm pointing at the 1 million gold button plaque, which was my next point. I have been uploading videos to YouTube for 10 years, and I have not reached a million subscribers. Do you see me fucking quitting and not uploading? You know how much money I've made in my career? I don't have to do shit, but I have a fucking goal. I could literally quit today and not do shit, right, and be fine. 
I can't do that. I got to reach that goal. I got. I, I, I started something. I got to fucking finish. I respect it. If you don't finish, you're a fucking loser. You don't fail until you quit. You don't fail until you give up. The second that you quit, that's when you fail. If you constantly try to achieve something, you're never failed because you're still trying. You can die trying and still not be a failure. Technicality, you died. You didn't accomplish your goal. If you lived another 10 years, could you have accomplished it? Maybe, right? But that's the point of this thing. At the end of the day, the reward's always going to be a creation. If you sit there and make a video, that's your payment. You created something. Be proud of that. <clears throat> anyway, hopefully next, next, uh, next, uh, what is it? We got to do a 60-50 podcast. So the next time that you're sitting on the couch, better believe that it's going to be you, Nate Shot, Big Timer, and Embos. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Anything else you want to say, man? I think, uh, no. I think we had it. We have a, a nice little uh, watch party that we're about to, about to view right now. Yeah, this caffeine hit me like a truck. I got an extra shot of espresso. I saw, I saw like a tunnel. All I could see was your face and your beady ass eyes. You must not quit. <laughs> you can't stop. Did it? Did it? Did it resonate? I I don't know. I went into like a dark hole for twenty minutes throughout that. I have a very hypnotic voice, especially <laughs> when I go on a tangent. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys on the next one. Hopefully, Carmi will be on the next episode. Just coming Goodbye. Out of it.